Hello and welcome to Trihack Me's Advent of Cyber 3, Day 11. I am Tiberius and I will be helping walk through the tasks on this day. Uh, the subject of the day is where are the reindeers and it's all about MS SQL, so Microsoft's version of SQL Server. Now uh, MS SQL is a relational database management system and a good way to think of relational databases is you have a groups of tables and some of those tables will have relationships between each other. So uh, there's a good example here. If you, in this example you have three tables, electronic items, customers and invoices. Each item in the electronic items table has an ID, a name, a price, a quantity. Each item in the customers table uh, has its own ID, name, email and phone. And then you have an invoices table uh, which effectively kind of links the, the two tables together. So it'll refer to a customer and one or more electronic items. Uh, the invoice table will refer to an entity from another table using the ID. So for instance, the electronic items ID and the customer ID here. Uh, this way we only have the customer details and the electronic item details written once instead of copying them to each new invoice. Uh, this case is a simplified example of a relational database. The figure below shows how the three tables are connected. So you have the customers table here, electronic items over here, and then invoices. And you can see, uh, so customer 103 has uh, uh, electronic items 1 and 2 on their invoice. And you can see that means that Rita, who is customer 103, uh, has an invoice for USB flash memory and a laptop. So hopefully that explains kind of how that works. Instead of copying all of the data into an invoice table, uh, you just refer to the IDs from the other tables. Okay, so let's uh, let's get on with the questions. Uh, we got to check the running services on this IP address. Now I have I have to note uh, you have to start the machine up here and leave it running for like five minutes or so, so the uh, the services all boot up. Uh, let's copy this IP address though. We're going to have to use nmap because the first question is uh, to find the open port. Obviously, we're going to use the clipboard to make sure we can copy it across into our attack box here. And if we do nmap dash capital P lowercase n so we don't have to ping the machine and then paste the IP address. And we'll do a quick nmap scan. And because this is going to be a default port, uh, the default top thousand uh, nmap scan should work. So we'll just wait a few seconds, hopefully. And there we go. So the server is obviously MS SQL and then the dash S for server. So we got 1433. And as you can see, that was the answer I got earlier as well. Knowing the MS SQL server is running and accessible over the network, we want to check if our username and password are still valid. Uh, you can use the command SQSH or sometimes pronounced squish. Uh, which is an interactive database uh, shell that can uh, communicate with MS SQL Server. Uh, so luckily we have the username and password, uh, the system administrator username here and their password there. So let's copy this command. And again, we're gonna use the clipboard so we can paste it directly into our attack box. Okay. So we've done that. If the connection is successful, you will get a prompt. We did. What is the prompt that you received? It's a one followed by a closing triangular bracket or a greater than symbol, whichever one you prefer. Uh, and that's the correct answer there. <coughs> okay. Uh, McDatabase admin told us the database name is reindeer and it has three tables, names, presence, and schedule or schedule. Uh, to display the table names, you could use the following syntax. Select asterisk from table underscore name where condition. Okay, so looks like in the terminal below, we executed the query select star, which is basically all columns from reindeer.dbo.names. Um, and I have to scroll across here. This SQL query should dump all the contents of the table names from the database reindeer. Uh, note that the semicolon at the end indicates the end of the SQL query and you have to type go to actually send the command to the database. Uh, so let's actually do that here. Uh, so you don't actually have to type it in capital uh, letters, but let's do that for now. Reindeer.dbo.names and a semicolon, press enter, type go and another set, uh, sorry, press go 
and uh, we get the table here. Uh, so we can see four columns in the table displayed above, the ID, the first, the last, and the nickname. Unfortunately, when you have a, a smaller terminal here, you see it all gets bunched up together. Uh, but let's try and answer the question anyway. What is the first name of the reindeer of ID 9? Well, if we look down the column, there's 9, and it looks like Rudolph is right next to it. Uh, but let's actually see if we can clear this up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press up twice, and we're going to go use the left arrow to go across to here. Now we're only interested in the first name, so the column name is first. So we're going to type first there, and we're going to go to the end, but before the semicolon, we're going to put a space. I'm going to say where ID equals nine. Okay, and then if we hit enter, type go, there we go. That's a bit better. So we know now uh, that for sure, the the reindeer with the ID 9 as a first name of Rudolph and yes that is correct okay let's move on check the table schedule what is the destination of the trip scheduled on December 7 okay let's start by doing a select or from reindeer.dbo.schedule and type go hit enter <coughs> okay let's scroll up again it looks like we have uh, four columns, ID, date, destination, and note. Um, and it looks like it's, it's kind of formatted quite nicely, um, ironically. Uh, but let's say, so what's the destination of the trip scheduled on December 7th? Well, there's December 7th. It looks like the answer is Prague, right? But um, let's actually try and get a better answer here displayed so the destination is what we want the column so we're going to replace the asterisk with destination and then we're going to go where i believe was the column called uh, date yes it was okay where date equals and because this is going to be a string you need to put in um basically uh, apostrophes or single quotes uh and the it was december 7th right so dc 7 2021 and press enter, type go, press enter again, and there we go, we get the same answer, Prague, and it is the right answer. Okay, moving on, check the table presence. What is the quantity available for the present power bank? All right, let's do a select all again from reindeer.dbo.presence, semicolon, Type go, press enter. Okay, this one looks like it just plays quite nicely. Uh, so finally, we've got one that works. Uh, what's the quantity available for the present power bank? Well, if we go down here, power banks there, it looks like the quantity is 25,000, but again, let's do it properly. So we'll go up, we will replace the asterisk with name. Oh, sorry, not name, we want, we want the quantity. And we'll go to the end do from uh, so not from where name equals and then again we want uh, single quotes power bank and the press enter and go and yeah there we go confirm the quantity is twenty five thousand, and that is indeed the right answer okay you've done fantastic work you've helped mcdatabase admin retrieve the schedule now let's see if we can run ms windows commands while interacting with the database some ms sql servers have xp underscore command shell enabled um, if this is the case we might have access to something similar to a command prompt now this is true for a lot of older sql servers um, it's very dangerous if it is enabled uh, hopefully it won't be on uh, on most production servers but you never know uh, the command syntax is xp underscore command shell and then within uh, single quotes the actual command you want to run obviously followed by a semicolon it is still technically um, an msl mssql statement so it does have to end in a semicolon let's try a simple who am i okay so let's do xp underscore cmd shell um, and then we'll do single quote who am i single quote and then obviously a semicolon type go press enter waits a little bit uh, now <laughs> the output is a bit weird but uh, effectively this is just one column uh, and there's the output there so we are running as nt service uh, mssql server okay yeah looks like it's uh, it's correct there 
We can try, we can run other commands that we execute on the MS, MS Windows command line. For example, we can use dir to list files and directories and type file name to display the contents of a file. Consider the example in the terminal window below where we reveal the, content, the contents of the text file Windows update.log. Okay, so in this case, they're using xb underscore command shell to basically display this C Windows Windows update.log file, uh, which looks like it's displaying it here. Okay, there is a flag hidden in the Grinch user's home directory. What are its contents? All right, so let's use xp underscore command shell to first do a list, a directory listing of the C uh, backslash users directory semicolon go okay so we scroll up uh, so directory of c users so obviously you've got the admin administrator grinch database admin and public so we're obviously interested in grinch so let's press up twice modify this path so we include grinch so now we're looking in grinch's home directory and if we do go okay scroll up doesn't look like there's a flag in these. Maybe it's on the desktop. So we'll press up twice again. And let's check out the desktop. Type go and enter. Okay, doesn't look like it. Uh, maybe it was in the documents folder. Okay, yeah, it was. All right, so the flag is in the documents folder. So now that we know the path, uh, we can use the file command to actually view the contents. So we're gonna put flag.txt there, and then we're gonna go all the way back, and we're gonna replace dir with type. And when we hit go, we should get the flag, and there we go. We can copy that in there, and it is the correct answer. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had fun on this uh, advent of Cyber 3. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Thank you very much.